Welcome to Celestial Insights, a weekly podcast that brings the stars down to earth. I'm your host, astrologer, coach, and intuitive Celeste Brooks. My purpose is to provide practical, unique, and insightful guidance to help you navigate the energies of the week like a boss. This is Celeste of Astrology by Celeste, and on this episode, I will discuss the astrology for the week of September 18th. The theme of this week is reversal of fortune. Let's start with a look back. We are in Mercury retrograde, and so far there have been two big stories. Number one, the Queen of England has died, and I had talked about that to look out for royalty, and yes, in fact, she passed on. Her chart of when she died is absolutely fascinating, and it's like peeling the layers of the onion about what this means for the whole year, as well as like just for her and her time of death has been very, very interesting. When she died, Mercury was stationed on Diadem, and her part of fortune is on Diadem. Diadem is the crown star. It's very associated with royalty. If you're interested, you can go to my YouTube. I taped a video, The Astrology of the Death of the Queen of England. Yeah, take a look at that. It's just really, really fascinating. The second thing that has happened is that Ukraine has started taking back land and territory that Russia took during the early phases of the war. And I talked about when it happened, how I feel like the war in Russia is very much a Mercury retrograde story. Russian troops crossed into Ukraine on the day that Mercury in Aquarius squared Uranus back on February 24th. And that 10 degrees of Aquarius that Mercury was at was the degree in which it went retrograde. And so much of the talk about this war has been about the miscalculations, the faulty strategy. And these are Mercury retrograde topics. Mercury is the planet of thinking, of communication, of thought processes, of speech. And when a planet goes retrograde, it doesn't operate at its best. And another thing about retrogrades is there can be reversals, reoccurrences, going back to the way things were. And that's what we're seeing now. The day Mercury stationed to go retrograde was the day that Ukraine turned the tide of the war and started taking back territory. And their strategy, unlike Russia's, was on point because if you could read the news, it was talking about how they had been talking about taking land back or fighting in another area and then did kind of like a switcheroo and strategically moved in on another place that wasn't expected. Very Mercury retrograde. So there may be some more since I taped this, but those are the two big stories that are directly related to this Mercury retrograde. And it's fascinating, like when Queen Elizabeth died, you can think about what happens when a planet retrogrades. It slows down and comes to a stop and then starts moving backwards from our perspective on Earth. Of course, it's an optical illusion, but you can think about how the world started standing still and talking about not just her and her impact, but the impact of royalty, of British imperialism. There's been a lot of talk about you know the atrocities that have been committed over the years and everything. So it's this huge conversation about not just her and her life, but what the the larger story of what the crown and British royalty has meant. So it's been very, very fascinating. And one last thing about that, Jupiter-Neptune was one of the big stories of this year. They met in Pisces, which is a sign that always invokes endings on April 12th and started a new 13-year cycle. And I'm wondering whether the British royalty will still be around. I mean, they'll be around, 
But what role will they have 13 years from now compared to today? I would imagine it would be very diminished. And it'll be interesting to know whether the British subjects are still paying and footing their bills at that time. So there are three big things I want you to think about this week. Another big feature of this Mercury retrograde, Mercury is in Libra and Jupiter is in Aries, and they are going to oppose each other three times. So the first one happened on September 1st. The second one will happen today, September 18th, and the last one, October 12th. And so let's talk about the nature of Jupiter. Jupiter on the high road is like magnanimous, is fair, generous, honest, honorable, very charitable, philosophical, moral. These are some Jupiterian words. And so you can think about people who have big Jupiterian traits. Those are some of the things that we can associate with them. And Jupiter rules the signs naturally of Pisces and Sagittarius, and it's exalted in the sign of Cancer. It doesn't have any essential dignity in the sign of Aries, but it's still Jupiter doing its Jupiter thing, making everything bigger, as well as magnifying things. And so Jupiter, when it's on the shadow side, can be very self-indulgent or overindulgent or like bloviating, a real know-it-all, exaggerating, being very arrogant. When I think about narcissistic personality, I think about Jupiter. Jupiter is the Roman god and Zeus is the Greek god in mythology. And, you know, thinking that one is God when people have unhealthy or operate on the shadow sides of Jupiter. So keep that in mind as we move through this time. So on a high road, Mercury opposite Jupiter can be like, you've had this big vision, something you've been working on for a long time, and you put plans into motion that can become a reality. So, you know, the thinking opposite the big idea and like having worked on it for a long time, bringing it into reality. But now, you know, Mercury is retrograde. So watch to see, you know, what you see over the next, this time period between now and October 12th, as well as what has happened already since Mercury went retrograde about like spectacular things being executed well, or like just completely falling apart. And we can think about with what's going on in Ukraine about how like they crafted this strategy and put it into action. Um, It feels very Mercury opposite Jupiter. Also, people in Russia are finally starting to vocally in public turn on Putin. And that was in the news the same day. Some are calling for him to be tried for treason and other things and talking about how this disastrous plan he put into motion has, you know, set Russia back decades and decades, not even, you know, besides the atrocities of what this is um, doing to the Ukrainian people. So we'll see what goes on with that. But I feel like Putin is a very Jupiterian figure, that smug look he always gets on his face. And it's going to be interesting because on Sunday, Mercury will be opposite Jupiter, and they will both be squaring Pallas Athene, the asteroid of strategy. And you can go listen to last week's episode where I talked a lot about Pallas Athene, but this pattern is called a cardinal T-square. There is a lot of tense energy that releases into the sign of Capricorn. And Capricorn was ruled by Saturn. So we can think about maybe there will be finally be consequences to what he has done for Vladimir Putin. So we'll see. It's a very action oriented aspect. I'm hoping that, you know, the people take him out of power and we'll see if that happens around this time. But I've been looking at his chart and looking at the astrology and wondering if his days are numbered. 
Now it's interesting because his chart is rectified. So it's got a DD rating. So we're not exactly sure that it's correct. But watching what's been going on for this year, it looks like the chart may be, may be accurate. And if so, yeah, he could be in for some trouble. The sec- next thing I want you to know is that there's going to be a balsamic moon phase this week. You know, normally every week there's one of the hard aspects, the new first quarter, full or last quarter moons. But this week, because the moon is moving somewhat slowly, there's not a big aspect. The last quarter moon was yesterday and the new moon is not until next Sunday. So there's no big aspect this week. So typically the moon, each moon phase is about three and a half days, but the moon is moving slowly. Its speed is between 11 on the slow side or 15 at its fastest degrees per day. And the balsamic moon is an incredible phase. It's the phase right before the new moon. It's that three and a half days right before the new moon. So if you go out and look, you'll see the crescent moon in the sky and it looks like the sea. The waxing crescent moon looks like the D, but if it looks like a C, it's balsamic. And that tells you the moon is losing the last of her light. This is a dark phase. This is in a very, very internal period. This is a time we should always slow down, get quiet. It can be very, very intuitive. So, You know, when you know when the new moon is, if you like just plan for a couple days before the new moon, as much as you can to lighten your schedule, to slow down, get some extra sleep and listen to your inner voice during this time is what's great to do around the balsamic moon. And Libra season starts on Thursday. Libra is a cardinal sign, so it is initiating energy. It is an air sign and air likes to connect. Air is about the intellect and the mental processes and how we communicate. And it's ruled by Venus, the planet of love, beauty, and harmony. And Libra rules relationships. So relationships will be in focus. Libra also starts the autumn. It's the equinox. When Libra season begins, we have the autumn equinox, you know, above the equator. And, you know, the leaves start to change and the day and the night are equal, an equal time at the equinox. And you can think about with that, you know, that makes sense of why it's a sign of finding balance, finding harmony and enjoying it. People with strong Libra can be amazing diplomats because they have the ability to figure out how to find win-win situations. A lot of lawyers are Libras, and you can think about like the glyph is that of scales. It's the only sign of the zodiac that's not represented by a living being. It's represented by this metallic object. And there can also be a real coolness with the energy of Libra. You can think about like the ice queen is a Libra archetype, a woman who is very like devastatingly beautiful, refined, elegant, but unemotional and detached and feeling like they're untouchable or butter wouldn't melt in their mouth. So you can think about that's another archetype related to Libra. Yeah. And some of the shadow side energies are the indecisiveness because there is so much of weighing between multiple options. On the shadow, it can be people who are indecisive or people who are people pleasing because they want everybody to get along or don't want anyone mad at them or don't want to rock the boat in any way. That's another shadow of Libra. So you can think about that. Yeah. But people with strong Libra energy can just be amazing strategists and think about like the chess player to me is another Libra archetype, somebody who can, that's also very Scorpio, but someone who can see all the different ways for someone to move and react to them. So on Sunday, the word of the day is bonkers. Now, the moon enters Cancer at 12.59 a.m. Pacific time. 
Emotions can really run high this day. The moon is out of bounds. So the moon rules the people and people can take on like a Uranian flavor to them or acting in very reactive ways with the moon being in cancer and out of bounds. Now, this is the day Mercury in Libra will oppose Jupiter and Aries. They're both at four degrees. So if you have planets around there, get ready for that. And hopefully nothing but good things will come. But both Mercury and Jupiter are, are retrograde. Yes. And the sun in Virgo will trine Pluto and Capricorn. This is an Earth trine. And so this could be great manifesting energy, but there can be a real ease and flow with trines. The reason I'm calling this day bonkers is because there are all these chart patterns. Mercury is making a chart pattern with the Saturn Uranus square. So Mercury is moving very slow because it is retrograde at its fastest. It's the fastest planet besides the moon. It can move at a clip of like a a degree and a half, maybe even faster a day, but now it's barely moving. And so it hasn't moved much the last couple of days. And this has been going on since I think about Thursday, where Mercury is in what's called a sesquiquadrate to Saturn and a sesquiquadrate to Uranus, and they are squaring each other. So that's a Thor's hammer. This is a very hard aspect where you can think about how Thor could knock the top off of mountains, and Mercury is like the handle. So some people are going to be using their words or using maybe legal things or something and like knocking people out in terms of like you get hit with an unexpected lawsuit and oh my God, it like just like feels like your life is being shattered or something. I think there's going to be some kind of big news in the collective. I'm thinking it might be, I'm hoping it's like them taking Vladimir Putin out because if you look at this hammer has been wielding and The sun was opposite Neptune yesterday. And so like Neptune dissolves things. And now the sun is trying Pluto. And there's also two yods in the sky. And yods are called um, the fingers of God or the fingers of fate in terms of like people have yods in their chart. And what that is, is another pattern that looks like a triangle where there's a planet And that planet is King Kunks to other planets. And those two planets sextile each other. So it's a little softer than the hammer of Thor. But when you have a chart planet and one of the planets is activated, like it sets off this chain reaction. So there's a yod with the south node, which is the cosmic drain that sends things down the toilet bowl at the apex. And Chiron and Aries and Mars and Gemini are at the base and they're sextiling each other. And so that's one of the yods. So that could be like something is set off where someone is injured in some way and things go down the drain. It could be, you know, some more of like, I feel like this could be also be like gun violence and stuff could be happening. And then there's another yod where... Chiron is at the apex and Venus and Virgo and the South Node and Scorpio are at the base. It'll be really interesting to see what happens in the days leading up to Sunday as well as um, Monday, Tuesday. But I think it has something big, something big to do with the war in Ukraine. Hopefully it's not something about this nuclear plant that has been in the news about them having to shut it down and there's potential for it to be really unstable. But it seems like something big could be happening. It could just be in people's lives, individuals' lives, or it could be something that the collective has to deal with. On Monday, the word of the day is surprise. Venus is contraparallel the asteroid Circe and Juno. And so Juno is the asteroid of partnership and marriage, but Juno was Zeus's aggrieved wife. And Circe was the sorceress, and Odysseus's men landed on her island, and she turned them into pigs. This is where the men 
Our pigs, our male chauvinist pig comes to play. She turned them into pigs that because they were behaving in a disgusting sexual manner. You can read the book Circe by Madeline Miller if you want a modern retelling of this myth. And yeah, so the, a contra parallel is similar, like there's an oppositional energy to it. So I feel like this could be like big breakups in relationships, Venus rules relationships because of either discovering infidelity or like a money issue where like somebody's been spending like a lot of money, you get the credit, open the credit card bill and then like go ballistic because Mercury is sesquiquadrate Uranus. Mercury, the planet of communication, sesquiquadrate Uranus. This is a hard aspect. There's tension and yeah, yeah, you go ballistic. That could be, or Venus is also going to trine Uranus. So Venus in Virgo, trine Uranus in in Taurus, that's ease and flow. Again, that can be like a break because Uranus breaks things. Or it can also be like a meet cute. So if you are single and ready to mingle, like make sure you look cute and go out, maybe go to Trader Joe's or Whole Foods or something like that or Safeway. I don't care. Or like just take yourself out to lunch or dinner or something like that. Put a little effort. I'm going to put make a note for myself to put a little effort into it when I go out and walk my little d So think about that. On Tuesday, the word of the day is vow. The sun is parallel the asteroid Diana. And this, I believe, is the day after the queen's funeral. So William and Harry make up or try to do something to fix the wound and that fissure that has been between them and thinking about their mother and maybe thinking about vowing in order to get back together and get back together in love. Now Mars is in Gemini, so maybe it's a fissure that won't heal. Let's hope not. But Venus on this day, Venus in Virgo, is King Kong Saturn in Aquarius. They're both at 19 degrees, and King Kong says, move us into new situations. There is a need to release and let go of something, so hopefully they'll be able to release and let go of the hurt. And maybe think about in your own life, if there's anything you've been holding on, but it's keeping you from doing something that, you know, is more important that, you know, think about the concept of having a vow and having a commitment. Venus and Saturn, we can think about, you know, that can be something about commitment as well, a long-term relationship. And the moon will enter the fiery sign of Leo at 1.37 p.m. Pacific time. Now, I love a Leo moon, Think about how you can have some fun today, this fiery energy. How can you show leadership? How can you be loyal and committed to those you love? These are things to think about. You may want to go out and have some fun, have a fun dinner on this night. On Wednesday, the word of the day is memories. And you may want to listen to the Barbara Streisand song, Memories, Misty Watercolored Memories. I'm not a singer, but of the way we were, you know, it's very Mercury retrograde. Things can be stirred up. This day feels very moony. There's a lot of the moon is making it, having a lot of conversations, one of which is squaring the node. So you may feel at an emotional crossroads. Yeah. Which way do you go up? Which way do you go? Do you go towards the North Node? Do these things simple lead with love? Or do you go towards the South Node and like just hold in your position and keep that anger or that obsession or, you know, be more focused about power or domination? Yeah, the more Marsian principle. You can think about that and make choices. The balsamic moon will start at 14 degrees of Leo at 5.33 p.m. Can you release even more what no longer serves you? We're in the waning phase. This is the time to go within and get intuitive. Yeah, so think about that. 
On Thursday, the word of the day is diplomacy. The sun at 29 degrees of Virgo will sesquiquadrate the north node at 14 degrees of Taurus. Now, 29 degrees of any sign is an anoretic degree. It has a karmic nature to it. It's like the planet is trying to express itself very hard before it changes signs. And so, yeah, with Virgo, there can be some like intense desires to correct things or revise things. And the North Node of Destiny being involved, sesquiquadrates can being bring achievement after delayed action. So this feels like there could be something big going on on this day, maybe impacting the collective because it's at 29 degrees. Yeah. And then the sun will enter Libra at 6.03 p.m. Pacific time, beginning Libra season, beginning the autumn equinox in the Northern Hemisphere and I guess the spring equinox in the Southern Hemisphere. And Mercury will go Kazemi at 11.49 p.m. Pacific time. And Mercury Kazemi will happen at zero degrees. And a Kazemi is when a planet is exactly conjunct the sun. Now Mercury will be going retrograde and the sun direct, the sun never retrogrades. And so when a planet goes into the heart of the sun, sitting with the heart at the throne of the king, there's this like um, burning off of old stories with going through a Kazemi phase. There is this symbology of death with Kazemi, but you know, you come out on the other side, almost like you have been cleansed or something. Yeah. Now this is the retrograde phase. So it's the inferior conjunction. So this may be a very interior awakening of something that needs to be let go of for yourself. It could be very interesting. Whenever a planet goes Kazemi, especially Mercury, it's a time to get quiet and you may get like some great downloads just great idea. So write anything down if you're still awake at this time. It's it's at night. But yeah, it's a very special time when Mercury is Kazemi. Now, because it's at zero Libra on a world point and that 29 degrees of Virgo sesquiquadrate the North Node, I just feel like this could be something big happening on this day. And this maybe this is the day Putin's, uh, that would be fantastic if Putin dealt, is dealt with. Yeah. But people can be making a big decisions about relationships at this time. So on Friday, the word of the day is revisit. The moon enters Virgo at 1253 a.m. Pacific time. I love a Virgo moon. This is a time to get practical. This is a time to declutter, to organize, to do the practical things in terms of, you know, the chop wood, carry water. Maybe you want to get your expenses together or get your, all your receipts together on this day. Just do some like office work if that's part of your job. Mercury will re-enter the sign of Virgo. So it's a time as well to turn your mental attention to more practical things. So the ideas you got when Mercury was retrograde, maybe we'll find form when Mercury goes, when Mercury was in Libra, find form when it goes back into Virgo. On Saturday, the word of the day is rosy. Venus will be opposite Neptune on this day. Venus at 23 Virgo, Neptune at 23 Pisces. This can be what we call the rose-colored glasses aspect. It's a time where people may make commitments that they later regret and then break. So, you know, anything that's done around this day where somebody tells you they're going to do something or even if there's signature put to paper, things may fall apart. So just know that this is not a day to commit to something because once the Neptunian fog and haze lifts, you may realize that you didn't want to do what you said you were going to do. Yeah, that could happen. So I'm going to be having a new moon webinar on Sunday. There's still time to sign up. 
So check the link in the show notes. This is going to be a great new moon to talk about relationships and your experience with them, how you want them to change, all that sort of things, and set the intentions to bring to life what you want. So that's it for this week's episode. Feel free to email me at Celeste at astrologybyceleste.com with any astrology and action stories about Mercury retrograde or any of the other transits, or let me know how the daily themes are playing out for you or how the words of the week are connecting. Take care, and I'll catch you next week. Thank you for listening to Celestial Insights. To learn more about my work, please visit my website, astrologybyceleste.com, where I offer personal readings, horary consultations, cosmic coaching, group events, and classes to help guide people to higher levels of fulfillment. You can also find me on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and Facebook at Astrology by Celeste. If you enjoyed Celestial Insights, please help others find the show. Follow, rate it five stars, or write a nice review. I would so appreciate it. I'm astrologer, coach, and intuitive Celeste Brooks, and I'll be back next week. 